aiming at 100% push notification. Insights from data analysis is my theme for presentation. Here is today's agenda. First, I will talk about introduction of the application, then logging and data analysis, dog booting, and finally, summary. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Hisato Shoji. I am the engineering manager of the Line B2B application development team. I'm responsible for two areas. One is development of the Line official account, iOS, Android app, and the other is Line official account related functions within the Line application. Today, I'd like to talk about the Line official account application. Today's session is mainly intended for iOS Android engineers and PMs, planners, QA, etc., who are involved in the development of iOS, iOS and Android application. I'll be presenting a case study of how we approached the issue of app notification by collecting and analyzing data and using dog footing in the development of our Line official account app. I hope this will give you a hint on how to solve the notification issues for app developers. First, let me give you a brief introduction to Line official account. It's a B2B2C product and is mainly a service for corporate users co to communicate with Line users over chat. Not only is it used by many corporate users, but it's also used by services provided by Line, Manga, and Demaikan, and others. If you are Line users, you have probably seen it before. This is a global service with over 10 million accounts. Line official accounts are B2B2C service, so regular Line users may not have the opportunity to see the screen that corporate users operate. We support multiple platforms including iOS, Android application, PC browser versions, and a web API, so you can connect it to some kind of backend server and exchange messages via API. iOS Android application is globally deployed. The number of users in Japan, Thailand, Taiwan, and Indonesia is increasing in line with the number of line users. It's used by a wide variety of businesses from large corporations, users who use web API to connect with line to small stores in the community. While there are web API and PC browser versions, the iOS Android applications are mainly used by small and medium-sized businesses. Specifically, they are small and medium-sized businesses such as local restaurants, pubs, beauty salons, and cultural classes such as yoga classes. The main function include chatting with line users, making line calls, issuing coupons, and posting to the timeline. Of these functions, the data tells us the chat function with chat with line user is most commonly used, making the chat function an important element of the application. By the way, the screenshot I will show you later is a dog hooding session within the development team. As the app development team, I regularly check the review comments on the App Store or Google Play and the inquiries to CS and participate in user interview with the planning team members. In the process, we have been continuously hearing that notifications for the application are not delivered or are delayed on both iOS and Android even though the chat function is a major feature in the application. Of course, we also conduct development tests during the development, and our dedicated QA team conducts QA to confirm the operation before its release. However, even though it continued to be pointed out in the reviews, our development or QA teams were not able to reproduce the platform. Those who are app developers may have experienced similar issues with notification not arriving or being delayed. 
As I mentioned earlier, our application is being developed globally. So maybe there are differences in overseas that is causing the problems. But、uh, since we are in Japan, it is only our guess because our QA team or development teams are located here in Japan. So, our team decided to collect logs and analyze the data because we should first check the data to see if the problem that we could not reproduce was really happening. Also, because the problem is not reproduced, it is possible that a patch will be added without checking. For that, it is necessary to be able to compare the data before and after the release to see if that patch is really working. You may think that Line Application Notification System may be doing something special. So, let me first give you a brief introduction to the Line Official Account Notification System. Far left is the Line Application Users, and she talks to the official account notification will be sent from the Line servers through the official account server to the apps. If it's iOS, it goes through APNS. If it's Android, it goes through FCM server to deliver notifications. It is very common configuration for iOS and Android application. As a special note, iOS uses notification service extension. And Android's FCM uses data message, not notification message. And JSON is sent from the server, and the Firebase messaging service in the app parses the JSON and extracts the notification string. As for the log implementation, Many of you may use well known third party SDKs for iOS and Android. But we collect logs in our own system. This makes it easy to cross match with server side logs, for example. For iOS, as I briefly mentioned in the previous slide, we follow Apple guidelines to use UN notification extension service to download images sent via chat and display them in notification. Plus, we are collecting logs. For Android, following FCM specification, JSON processing is performed in Firebase messaging service and logs are collected at the same time. One point to note is that collection of logs has been reviewed by a dedicated department to information security, and the logs are collected in a format that is considered to be acceptable from the perspective of privacy. Now, after log collections, our iOS Android engineers are conducting the analysis. The reason behind this is because our company has an organization of data scientists, but in this case, unlike the usual A B testing on GUI, we need to have a deep understanding of the specification of APNS and notification service extension for iOS and FCM. Uh, Android DOS and background restrictions for Android. iOS Android engineers may not have a full understanding of those specifications, so they have to refer to documentation or operation to confirm. I think a data scientist may. Be difficult to find the deep understanding about these specification. Also, once you get the logs, you may have other questions or hypotheses and want to look at the additional logs. Since iOS Android engineers collect and analyze logs, so it is quite fast in the cycle. Lastly, many of the iOS Android developers were interested in doing data analysis so that it's Uh, why I think、uh, we are doing it on our own. Now, let me show you the real data. 
This chart shows the percentage of notification that had a difference of the less than one minute. Uh, between the timestamp on the official LINE account server and the timestamp when the notification reached the application and was processed. In other words, how much portion was within one minute between user chatting and it is displayed. The lower the number, the more delayed notification gets. In fact, a histogram, histogram may be more accurate, but for the sake of clarity in this presentation, I will use this format for my presentation. One thing to note is that if you are out of coverage or back online after being turned off, the data will look like it is delayed notification. But since it seems technically impossible to eliminate such cases, especially with iOS, the number includes such cases. Therefore, even in the best case, it will not be 100% in this chart. Let's compare the data by region. From the left, there are Japan, Taiwan, Thailand, and Indonesia. First of all, latency in Android is much higher than in iOS, so we decided to focus on Android. Also, as I mentioned earlier, that there might be unique circumstances overseas. So that's why it's delayed. But uh, the actual data shows that rate of latency is still higher in Thailand and Indonesia than in Japan and Taiwan. If you are only doing development and QA in Japan and not checking the data, you may not be aware of such problems in other markets. We wish we could go to Indonesia to debug as well as research local users and markets. But under this pandemic, I think uh, checking data is more and more important because the travel is restricted. If you don't have any knowledge of the iOS Android specification, you may think that the quality of Android is worse than that of OS. So we will take a closer look at Android. First, where does Android latency or delay come from? Which process is causing this delay? From the top, the time it took from the LINE official account server to the FCM, from FCM server to Firebase messaging service of the Android application, and the third is the time it took from the JSON parsing and notification API process. Bar chart will only show the middle section, so I show this in a table. But we can see the time from the FCM server to the Firebase messaging service is taking the average of 70 seconds. The timestamp in the FCM server can be obtained by remote message, remote message get sent time which can be referenced when the data reaches the Android application. As for the processing in the Firebase messaging service at the bottom, I avoided downloading images that would take more than 10 seconds, according to Google's guideline. Once the notification is displayed, the work manager will download the image and update the notification when the image are downloaded. Line official account application follow guideline. This part of the process seems to be fine as the process is completed in 36 seconds on average. Android engineers may be familiar with Android Dose Mode, a feature introduced in Android 9 that basically limits CPU usage when the user is not using the smartphone to save the battery life. Does it impact FCM? According to Android developers, 
guideline. If the priority is set to high, it is no impact. But if the priority is set to normal, it will not be processed immediately during dose mode in order to save CPUs. And there might be some delay. If the priority is set to be normal and dose mode is not tested by developers of QA, users may experience notification delay due to dose mode. The chat function in the LINE official account application requires immediate notification, so the FCM pri priority is set to be high. So if it's set to high, is there no impact? Along with those, there is an Android OS feature called App Standby Bucket. Most frequently used is categorized as active, then working set, frequent, rare, and restricted. Categorized by OS. As for SCM, if it's frequent or below, the number of high priority messages per day is restricted to be 10 or 5, and if it goes beyond that, it will be downgraded to normal. Then it is affected by those, as explained in the previous slide, and notification will be delayed. If the application is not so often used, users may not need to receive high-priority notifications, rather reducing the frequency of waking up CPU by notification to save battery life is actually Android OS specification. For example, you may not want to send an immediate marketing notification to Android users such as time sale 50% off for 30 minutes in order to wake up dormant users. By the time the notification arrives, it may already be more than 30 minutes. Let's check the actual data from the official line account. There is no restricted notification in our apps, so we compare the latency in active, working set, frequent, frequent and rare. In the case of frequent and below, it is affected by app standby bucket, and we can see in the actual data that the percentage of the notification received within a minute drops significantly. In developer testing or QA team testing, the application is mostly active, so it would be difficult to get this behavior in manual testing unless you know the exact specification. This chart shows each region's Android app standby bucket total to the far left, either active or working set in the middle. If we just look at the frequent users, all regions except for Indonesia show lower latency. In addition to this, I also did some numerical comparisons between users with SIMs and then those operating on Wi-Fi, thinking that Wi-Fi users may be offline when the screen is off, which may cause delays in notification. We did find a trend that users with SIMs tended to experience less latency, but unfortunately, we did not find any differences between Indonesia and other regions that could clearly explain the cause of latency, especially in Indonesia. We can confirm the fact that the range of delays differ from region to region, but I feel that it is difficult to grasp the cause of delays in the relevant region from the data. If you are interested in the content of this presentation and would like to check it out in your own application, here is a list of APIs. The status of App Standby Bucket can be checked using the Usage Stats Manager API. If you can check the priority of the FCM in the API of remote message in the FCM, when the priority and original priority are different, it is recognized that the priority has been changed by the function of App Standby. As a matter of fact, one of the previous problems with the LINE official account app was that when an event occurred on the server side, without considering whether the receiving app was iOS or Android, the JSON of the event would be sent at any rate, and the app side would determine whether it was necessary or unnecessary, and whether to delay the notification or discard it. So there was a specification to do this. We saw that was wasting the bucket of frequent and rare users, so we changed the specification to send only the necessary notification from the server side to the Android app and saw an improvement of 17% in number of Android notifications that were delayed for more than 100 seconds. 
However, the improvement was only for notification from users who are not actively using the LINE official account app, so it is not clear whether the users really felt that the improvement was as great as numbers suggest. In addition to avoiding unnecessary notifications, the LINE official account also sets a priority to normal for notifications that do not require as much immediate response as chat so as not to consume buckets. There are several other features of Android that may affect the behavior of battery life and notification, and some of you may be wondering about them. As far as we have been able to find out with our app, it is background restriction on the left, left side of the screenshot and do not disturb mode on the right side of the screenshot, which is displayed on the upper right corner of the status bar. For your information, Google Pixel Japanese mode is become silent mode. Now, first of all, the status of background restriction can be obtained using the API described above. And the Android developer site state the FCM is not affected. Because of this, our team initially did not give much priority to confirming this. However, when we took a look at the UI of the relevant feature in the Android OS, we found that there might be a delay in notification. In the Firebase blog, there is also a statement that FCM will not be delivered when this disruption is in place. So it is possible that we misunderstood the interpretation of the document, but at least the specification was not easy to understand. So we will check the data to draw a conclusion. First of all, the amount of affected notification was as low as 0.27% for the session, but if we use the number of notification as a denominator, we find that the background restriction was true for 1.88% of all notification. There is also a clear difference in the percentage of notification that arrived within a minute. However, Upon further investigation, we found out that this is a spurious correlation. If we narrow down the app standby bucket to only frequent users, we can see that there is no difference in the ratio of notification received within a minute, regardless of a background restric restriction status. The rate of background restriction setting is uneven among some manufacturers. And looking at the GUI of the uh, uh, device in the question, uh, it seems that there is a function to automatically turn on background restriction for apps that are not used very often. I also looked into do not disturb mode. Um, this is like a focused mode, and if it is set to on, notifications are suppressed and are not displayed until it is set to off. If you set it accidentally, user feels the notification is delayed. However, in our case, only 0.19% of all notifications were affected. It is possible that users intentionally set their notifications during their sleep time, so we believe that the percentage is not that problematic. Do not disturb mode can be set in various ways, and then since the setting values are included as a bit flags in the suppressed visual effects, we can check whether the settings related to notifications are set. Now, let me summarize data acquisition and analysis. For Android, we introduced the possibility of misreading the data if you are not aware of the app standby bucket specification when analyzing the data. In addition, by minimizing the number of times the FCM API is called with high priority on the server side, it is possible to avoid delays on notification for infrequently used users. We also found that the background restriction and do not disturb mode had no significant impact on our app. For iOS, uh, we were able to collect logs using notification service extension. Also, the overall trend seems to be that there is less delay in notifications than on Android. As a result, our team focused on the Android side. 
We are still analyzing the data from the LINE official account app, and we are also analyzing and examining the data about the notification delivery rate, which was pointed out in the store review. But to be honest, we are struggling a bit. So I do not include those points yet in this presentation. I have talked about delays in notification in particular, but while it is possible to confirm that a problem is occurring in the data and to check the effects of a fix, it is difficult to know exactly what is happening at the user's hand from the data alone. In addition, there is no way to obtain data on the arrival rate of notifications or delay if the APIs of APNS and FCM are not called in the server due to omission of specifications or bugs in the first place. While many application development teams may be doing this, our team also conducted dog fooding in parallel with data analysis. I would like to talk about what we have learned as a result. However, even though it is simply called dog fooding, our app is designed for restaurants and beauty salons to communicate with their customers. So it was a bit difficult to get used to the functions within the app development team. If we don't use dog fooding for use cases that our team members use on a regular basis, we will eventually get bored and then stop using dog fooding. We also received the feedback from users about the problems of the notification, so we wanted to make it possible for the development team to integrate dog fooding into their daily work and receive notification in the app. As a result, some of the development team members who work flex hours during COVID-19 conditions said they didn't know others working hours, so they didn't know how to chat with them. So we decided to make it a team rule to send messages to members on our official LINE account when we go to work or leave during the day. Soon after, we discovered that we were not getting any notifications that our team members had arrived at the work in the morning. This is the same diagram I showed you earlier. When the administrator of an official LINE account is operating the account on the PC browser version, Notifications will not be sent to the smartphone application by default. And as you can see, when you try it out, it can be a bit annoying to hear your smartphone vibrate when you know for sure that you have received the chat on your browser. So it is actually a feature of the LINE app as well. However, there was a problem with the handling of events in JavaScript, and even when the PC was in screensaver or locked, the server incorrectly assumed that the browser version was still in use, preventing notifications from being sent to the smartphone. This has now been fixed and is working correctly, but this type of combination problem was overlooked due to the difficulty of the uh, QA, and I think it would have been difficult to find the problem without dog fooding. So we were able to find them thanks to our dog fooding activities. Another problem was that uh, every three days or so, the Android system would somehow stop sending notifications of work arrival and departure, which was reported by some members of the development team. When we took a closer look at LogCat on the device to reproduce the problem, we found that the above suspicious log. When we checked the source code in the AOSP and in Android OS, we could see the logic to suppress the display of notification when number of displayed notification exceeds certain threshold. I wrote the file pass which is relevant to this, so please check it out if you're interested. This specification was introduced in Android 2.3.1 according to the AOSP Git log. Therefore, it is expected that almost 100% of Android devices in market will be affected by these features. Uh, 
So when the limit is reached, the API call of notification manager dot notify will be ignored and then logcat will be output to the system side. Please note that when you are debugging in Android Studio, you may often filter other than the log of the application process. At least, as far as I could find, there are some English technical forum pages, but I couldn't find any official Android developers pages that describe the function. As for the upper limit, it was initially 50 in Android 2.3.1, then changed to 25 from Android 10, then to 50 again from revision 18 in the middle of Android 11, and the latest AOSP for Android 12 is 50. So if you have an Android device and you can use this ADB shell command to check if your device is affected by this quota. The dump quota violations can be found by running dumpsys notification. This example shows that the total of uh, 29 notifications were not really displayed due to quota violations. Unfortunately, as far as we could find, there is no Android public API to get the quota status directly. However, you can use Notification Manager's Get Active Notifications API to check the number of currently displayed notifications, so you can indirectly check if you are affected by quota from there. In your app, before displaying a notification, uh, we check the number of notifications currently displayed, and if the number of notification is up to quota limit, we delete the oldest notification and display the newest one. This was a problem we noticed with dog fooding, so we didn't have any data on how many notifications were being displayed in the app at that time. Also, after we noticed the quota problem, uh, we immediately added the process to delete all the notification and then release the app. So unfortunately, I can't compare the data of notification displayed before and after the countermeasure. This graph shows the data after the release. There is a peak at the upper quota limit on the far right, which is about 35% of the total. Therefore, it is possible that up to 35% of the notifications were ignored and not displayed even though the Android API notifications were called. But if you are keen, you may have noticed that not only the upper limit of 25, but also the limit of 24 on the far right is high, which looks a bit unnatural. In fact, uh, it would have been better if we could have gotten more accurate data by Deb Day, but since the API for checking the number of notifications mentioned above is not is an asynchronous API, um, we think that the timing of getting the data is a little too early, and uh, this may have been caused by the timing issues. So we think this may be really a timing issues. So uh, let me summarize. Um, as for what we have noticed, first of all, we were able to confirm from the data that iOS seems to have less problems with notification latency than Android. Android app standby bucket could be the cause for delay. Since this is a specification, it is necessary to minimize unnecessary FCM API calls on the server side or set only really necessary notification to high priority and lower the priority for less urgent notification. Also, when analyzing data, it is necessary to obtain the status of a bucket at the time of log collection and look at the data while taking the bucket into account. And there is also a limit to the number of notifications that can be displayed for Android. If it's necessary, you have to change it for many notification cases such as chat. However, since the upper limit changes depending on the version of the Android OS and there is no definite specification in the document, implementation should be done carefully. Carefully. One of the things our team would like to do in the future is 
to compare the number of notifications sent from our server with the number of notifications received by the app and measure um, how well the notifications are reaching the uh, app. But as I mentioned earlier, we are struggling a bit. We are also considering implementing a troubleshooting function for users who think they are not receiving notification. We are also considering implementing a troubleshooting function for users who think they are not receiving notification. Through this function, we hope to not only help users solve their problems, but also accumulate knowledge on how to investigate the cause of the problem, whether it is misunderstanding on the part of the user or an inconsistency in data. Lastly, our team uses logging and analysis to prove that a problem is occurring, to investigate the factors that may be causing the problem, and to verify that the problem has been resolved after the release of the fix. For dog fooding, we usually monitor the functions in actual use cases to make sure there are no problems. I think it is important to integrate it into the daily work of the development team. Thank you very much for your attention.